Hey there, I'm Mark from Spectrum Pulse, and today we have from Magdalena Bay, Imaginal Disc. I've pondered for literally years now whether or not I was too hard on Mercurial World by Magdalena Bay back in 2021. Sure, I've warmed a bit to it since, especially when I saw the duo live at Oceaga in 2023, where they proved they absolutely have the vision and star power to be bigger. But in terms of their genre that I put on a higher tier, something is holding me back from fully embracing them as the genre-bending pop savants that have received so much critical acclaim. Naturally, when I saw even more critical claim thrown at this sophomore album, I had some trepidation going in, and now having given this a lot of listens, some of that apprehension is still here, preventing me from liking this at the same level as everyone else. So I went back to my thoughts on their debut album, where a lot of it circled around the production of those bricked out psychedelic moments, especially with some of the more programmed percussion, balanced out with all the baby voice cooing vocals, where it was never quite sure what level of irony Mika Tenenbaum was operating on, while the best hooks they eventually broke through for me, the album as a whole has never fully clicked. And it's interesting that while I still don't think I'll ever fully love Mika's vocals on record in this form, although she does dip into her lower register with Angel on a Satellite, the penultimate track, which lends it an emotional texture I wish this album pushed a little harder, most of my issues, they actually seem like they're resolved. The drumming is more organic overall to complement the grooves. The production can still fall into some blown out moments or questionable mixes. That high frequency that creeps all through Vampire in the Corner, it was painfully distracting, and the song's a bit too stiff to justify that being the point. But really, it's far less often, and most importantly, the emotional through line feels less diffuse by way of Gen Z irony. In comparison with the TikTok deflections of some of the underlying darkness on Mercurial World, this is structurally more conceptual, introspective, dare I even say personal. So the album begins with the protagonist, loose stand-ins for the duo, as confronting what is normalized and ordinary in their regular lives, and then the expectations that are placed on them by family and society. And when they realize they don't quite fit into those, they encounter an idealized version of them that breaks them out of their exasperated boredom with the power of music into, well, it's intentionally left kind of abstract. There is that dread and tilting into what you think you're supposed to be, feeling weightless as you leap off the cliff on image, trying to untangle whether your purpose is for the love that might be all around you, or something more existential with death at the very end, especially when all of that love can be lost or compromised and sometimes it's not even your fault for it. But that passion, it is worth seeking over numbness, they drive towards it, and they eventually embrace that love from everyone, and then the album swerves which after the revelation on Love is Everywhere, the darkness starts creeping into That's My Floor, showing what happens when the balance becomes inverted and you're willing to take and accept all that love while not giving it to the same extent. It's the other side of the coin, and I appreciate just how well they played into that needy, preening persona, especially juxtaposed with the feedback loop that can come as an artist in that niche with the ultimate admission on the penultimate track that they would prefer some of that escape than just staring back into the darkness and the void, which leads to this album feeling apocalyptic and recursive in the same way as Mercurial World, albeit now with the lingering open question whether or not there might be a third option to break out of that cycle, and at least to an ending moment that might be musically unresolved, but that's for a purpose. Life's like that, after all. And that leads to my next big observation. For as much as Magdalena Bay has been pegged as weird or quirky, admittedly more for their imagery than their sound, there's a very human emotional core to this project, balancing out the love you give and then receive, marrying their pop instincts with a more pronounced prog influence, which you can certainly hear in how they melodically bend across scales and odd chord structures. I mean, a lot of folks have made the Kylie Minogue comparison, but I think the more apt one might be Aqua, and that goes beyond the similar vocal timbre, because beyond the callback to the sound, they were a band that was never appreciated in their time for their melodic weirdness because they played into gimmicks rather than something that's more conceptual, as Magdalena Bay does. And hell, their experimentation feels more rooted in languid, psychedelic flourishes that kind of go into odd places. The gauzy yacht rock grooves on Killing Time with that killer bass line and the texture percussion, and then the guitar just sice through. The sharper key 
Keening balanced out against another great new disco groove on Image before the implacable buzzed out chunks ramp up that menace, a natural fit for the piano driven psychedelic disco of Death and Romance. Then you get the crushing borderline funk rock swagger of That's My Floor that really contorts its weirdest moments but naturally flows into the darkest ABBA inspired flip I have heard in a long time on Cry For Me, probably my favorite song melodically here. I'm not saying they're all winners between Vampire in the Corner and Love is Everywhere. Some of the grooves stiffen up and not all the stuttering textural freakouts connect for me. The album really does sag there. But overall, I think more of Imaginal Disc sticks. Even if I'm a bit lukewarm again, some of that is the vocals, some of that's production choices, some of that is some questionable choices to drive momentum, as some of these tracks will wear out their welcome running a little long, as you would expect when they have that prog influence. But I think albums like this, where they're progressive experimentation and more of a conceptual framework, where it's more finely honed while not compromising the pop side, that's a great direction for Magdalena Bay. The odds of crossing over absolutely will go down for the main stream, but if it translates to more cohesive, thought-provoking projects, I would call that a win. In the meantime, they beat the sophomore slump and delivered a really damn good disc that is worth that spin. Yeah, worth most of the hype. Give it a shot. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you want to see more, please be sure to like, share, drop comments, subscribe. Again, I'm not sure how this is going to be received. Again, this album has received so much critical acclaim for me only calling it very good and not great. That might cause a little bit of a pushback, but hey, what do you know? I actually think this album is pretty damn interesting, and I do think it's an improvement. Beyond that, though, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And y'all want to get involved in helping support the channel beyond buying my merch, link to my Patreon is right over there. Once again, don't feel obligated, tough times, but if you want to get albums on my schedule or hell, just support the channel, yell at me on my Discord, the option's available. I am considering opening up other options to help support the channel for a new initiative I'm planning in the very new future, but again, I'm just going to tease that there more will be revealed. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.